Hello! And welcome to the channel. In this tutorial, we explore families by building this nested family, step by step. As shown in the image, this family is mostly made up of rectangular extrusions. And a C-shaped profile. So, we will look. The first step is to create a family template containing the required shared parameters. Start by opening the default family template as shown. The next step is to set out some reference planes. Simply copy from the center and drag to either. Type DI for dimension. And dimension is shown. Once done, select each dimension, add move up to the ribbon. Then click new parameter. For name, type length and set parameter type as instance. Repeat for the other dimension, but this time, call it depth. Activate the front view, then create another reference plane and dimension. Create the parameter and call it height. We have now successfully created a parametric frame to host the nested components. In step 2, we can create the shared parameters required. In the ribbon, click on the shared parameters button. From the dialog, click create. Then, give the file a name and proceed. First, create a group to And then, click New to start creating parameters. And that's it. That's how shared parameters are made. Now, the shared parameters can be added to the template. I have already done this, and these are the parameters I have. Now that the template is complete, I can save it and use it to create my component parts. When saving, we need to ensure two things are done. 1. Make the template shared. This is so the data can be hosted. 2. Set the category classifications. Furthermore, this can help define which category to use. In step 3, extrusions can be made. Start by picking the extrusion option from the create tab on the ribbon. Then from the draw tools, pick rectangle. Now, when sketching, start inside the reference planes. And then, align to each of the reference planes. Remembering to lock each time. Once done, click the green tick to finish. To create the bench top and shelves, a thickness needs to be added. To do this, pick the top reference plane and copy it down. Then, align the top of the extrusion as shown. Lock and complete by aligning the Then, type DI and adjust the thickness value to 50. Now, earlier in the tutorial, I showed that most of the parts are rectangular extrusions, just like this one. So, save as, multiple times, each time flexing the parameters as required. When saving, it is always a good idea to create a thumbnail preview. This will help identify the family when browsing the content library. To do this, go to 3D view. Then, move down to the view control bar and lock the view. Following this, move on up to the file tab. Click and choose Save As. In the dialog, over on the far right, pick Options. Find the thumbnail source 
and set to 3D view 1. Then, click Regenerate. Then, reopen the family template we created. This will be the host family, where all the nested components will be assembled. Save as, front counter. I like to prefix the host with XX. This helps to filter, the host from the parts when scheduling. Now, we can start to assemble the family. Lo Place the loaded family in the reference zone. Then, click to activate its parameters. Move across to the Properties palette, where, under Dimension you will find the size constraints. On the far right of each parameter, click the Radio button. This will launch the Parameter Association dialog. Then, click the corresponding parametric association, in this case, Length. Let's take a moment to understand what has happened. Each family, the host, and the loaded family, has three size parameters as shown. We have linked these together, so that in both families, the length is driven by- Now, let's proceed. Align the loaded family to the reference planes of the host. Type AL for align and find the center reference of the host family, then align to the corresponding reference on the nested family as shown. Don't forget to lock. Now, we can finalize the nesting action by completing the association of the remaining parameters. Let's continue adding each family, repeating the steps recently shown. The next family to be nested is the C-shaped carcass. Let's take a moment to see how this can be made. From the Create tab, find Sweep. Then, on the Modify tab, find Sketch Path. Sketch the path just above the reference lines, then, align and lock to the references as shown. Finish the sketch. From the ribbon, choose Edit Profile. Pick the referencing view. Sketch the profile C shape. Repeat the align and lock process for each line. Then, using the Pick Lines tool, offset to create thickness. Finally, trim and finish. Now, let's do some flexing, to test if the parameters are working. Let's continue building. We can associate the length and align the back face. To correct the height, switch to an elevation view. The completed family has a bench top. So let's define those constraints. Copy the top reference plane down. Then, add a dimension to constrain the thickness. Lock this dimension so that the thickness does not change. Switch back to the floor plan and set the depth value. Here, we can just type the value we don't always need to associate. It all depends on the end function. The next process is to set out the shelf. In this view, the bench top is hovering at the wrong height, so let's correct that by moving it up. Use the align tool to snap that into position. Because we constrain the thickness in that family, when we align, the thickness value is retained. Then, tab to select the shelf family and drag it down. 
Type WT to tile the views. Then, on the Modify tab, pick Parameter Properties and create a new parameter as shown. We can create the first formula. Then, apply this to the shelf. Now, the end family has multiple shelves equally spaced. So copy the reference planes and equally space them. To space equally we need a center reference to align to. So, let's edit the shelf family and see how that can be. Add the required reference plane in the center, and then, from the properties palette, set the reference to strong. After reloading, it is possible to snap to the center of the shelf thickness. In the complete family, the number of shelves is parametric. To do this, use the array tool. Set the starting point and the end point as shown. Then, add a parameter to control the quantity. Continuing on, flex the family to see how it is working. Make adjustments as required and as shown. Here, I have added the end panels using the same principles shown earlier. Feel free to go back and review if required. Let's continue defining some more formulas. The bench top needs to extend over each end panel. So, the formula can be, the total length, plus the thickness of two end panels. The important things to remember with formulas are, to keep it simple, and use correct syntax. We are in the home stretch now and we can add the final elements. Here, I have loaded the kick plate. And as shown in the image, the carcass needs to move up. We can associate to inbuilt parameters also. Here, I use the offset parameter. Part of creating formulas also means, creating additional constraints as you progress. Here, we need a height control for the carcass. This will work together with a control for the bench top thickness. Take a look at how it comes together. In the final part of the tutorial, we can add the doors. This uses all the techniques shown throughout the tutorial. Create an extrusion as shown. You can even bevel the edges to create more detail. Then, align and lock to the references. To add the door swing details, go to the annotation tab and find symbolic lines. Then, simply draw on the front face of the door. To make the symbolic lines parametric, Ensure the ends are aligned in both directions as shown.